Welcome to Marquee Backstage. I'm your host, Julie Milam. In many ways, our featured artist seems to come from another planet. Drawing inspiration from art and culture, he is an expert at combining the past and present to bring rock and roll into the 21st century. Prepare to meet a modern rock star like no other. This is Jossie. Woke up to meet the teacher. Jossie, I have been counting down the days to sit down with you and peel back all the layers. Welcome to Marquee Backstage. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So first of all, tell everybody your full name, because I'm intrigued. My full name, so my actual given name is Jossie, and my middle name is Teowa, and my last name is Hughes. Okay. So it's kind of a pretty, uh, pretty bizarre combination <laughs> of things. But it fits you. It does, absolutely. Yeah. So, where did you grow up? I grew up in Mount, in West Virginia. Okay. In a holler. Mm-hmm. Uh, small town called Hinton. And my dad uh, landed there in 1974 and uh, basically moved there with a group of people, sort of like a commune. Mm-hmm. And uh, they, they started working and rebuilding these old farmhouses. And then slowly he acquired the farm solely himself. And it was this kind of super idyllic... Um, kind of bubble, you know, mm -hmm. sort of this uh, sort of this world that was in many ways very isolated and I was yeah, I was the only child okay. in this environment and so I just kind of was into all of it. So I started dancing really young. I mean, I started playing, my first time playing music, I remember I was four years old and I was obsessed with the Beatles mm -hmm. and I got together like all these boxes and pots and pans and chopsticks and I had a drum set and I would play along with the Beatles uh -huh. like in the living room, like playing drums and that was like, like my first thing about four years old. And then when I was six, my parents got me a guitar at, at like a local flea market, like a fifteen dollar okay. guitar. And um, they didn't play instruments. They didn't. Okay. My dad played a little claw hammer banjo. He had okay. learned some claw hammer from some of the old timers. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I kept playing guitar, and I started taking some guitar lessons. And then it was kind of up until I was about thirteen. You know, I was like, you know, I had played at like the school talent show and gotten a taste of like mm -hmm. being audience, being yeah, being yeah, performing, um, and I loved it. But I was kind of you know sort of, I guess kind of at a stage where I was good, but I wasn't like a musician really mm -hmm. yet. And uh, for Christmas, my parents got me a live Led Zeppelin CD and it just completely blew my mind. Mm -hmm. It completely like blew everything out. It just kind of was like, oh, okay. You can go that, f like you can take it that like blues, just playing this heavy blues that was like, it was just the musicianship was just unlike anything. Yes. So I basically played along with Led Zeppelin records from the age of 13 to 17 every single day. At the same time, I had grown up with a kid who was uh, two years younger than me, and and his father was a drummer, and so he, you know, we we grew up you know going to all these hippie parties where there were drum circles, and so we were always drumming together. And I knew he was you know he was he was had it in his blood. It's kind of like hey you know I kind of called him out of the blue. I was like hey maybe we should get together and play. I think that was kind of like the first time I wrote a song like with 
a band and we like played a like a little talent show thing. Yeah. Um, but we played we played like a lot of like local you know things we played. We played this high school dance. I remember when I was 15, and that was kind of like the first time feeling like you know, oh wow, this is this is really fun. Mm -hmm. You know, people like really responding, and um, yeah, it was just kind of like wow. I think I think this is like what I actually want to do. And so at that point, we were still playing. I was reaching the end of high school, and I was like, I want to do music, and then. I uh, sort of just kind of randomly found out about Berk the Berkeley School of Music, and so I auditioned. I got in. I got some scholarship, and so I went to Boston, like straight out of the mountains of West Virginia. I went Mind to Boston. Blown. The game changer. Boston was a game changer. Boston was. Yeah. Was it hard? Was that hard for you to adapt? Because a lot of people, at that age of their life, when you're 18 years old and you're going out to be independent for the first time, yeah, it's a very difficult change. Mm -hmm. But for you, it had to have been. It actually, yeah, I was ready. Was it freeing? It was. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, it was. I was definitely ready. Yeah, I was. I was Beyond I ready. I was very ready. <laughs> I mean. Yeah, and I mean, I love, I love the farm and stuff, but I was, I was very ready to be in a new environment, and I just, I was like really hungry to, you know, learn. I really wanted to learn. Ended up playing guitar for a band that was like touring, okay. that were Berkeley students, but they were, they had, they played like the Palladium in L.A. opening for wow. Daddy Yankee. <laughs> they were a Latin, so they were like a Latin band. They were Latin, it was like kind of Latin rock. Um, but they had these great guitar players who left the band, and I was like, well, those guys are really good. Like. If, you know, if I can get that job, I must be pretty good. <laughs> so it was kind of like just sort of a thing. I auditioned and I got the gig, and then I ended up playing these like huge shows with this but band. That was great practice. It was great for you practice. To see that the was venues sort of exactly and to see the whole yeah. backstage environment, but the, how the whole process it comes was yeah. together. Yeah. So that was kind of a cool experience. I sort of did, you know, I did for like a year in there. That was that was yeah, it was great to get to play these big venues and sort of experience that. And then I finished Berkeley. I, I guess towards my last year there, I actually, there were some other students that I had, in the meantime, I had, you know, met some students that I collaborated with, like either as, because this whole time I had been recording, so mm -hmm. I was kind of getting better at production, so I would kind of like produce some songs and co-write, and you know, just experimenting with all these different things. Um, and one of those artists was recording in Nashville, and so I came down, we recorded at RCA Studio B. Yep. And, um, I wrote a bunch of music, and um, I also, in the meantime, in West Virginia, I tried to put together a band with my original drummer mm -hmm. and a bass player who was like one of my best friends, and we like did some shows around, and it was kind of like, okay, maybe this is my band, you know, because I guess what I was looking for the whole time was like thinking of myself as like, a, I want a band, mm -hmm. a band, you know, that's what I write for. And, uh, you know, we wrote some stuff, and we tried to sort of do it, but it became clear pretty quickly that it was not going to be like an all-out dedication mm -hmm. you know these mm -hmm. were 
my hometown buddies and yeah. you know and, and 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 like with Ben the drummer there was this there's like this amazing synthesis that we have because we mm -hmm. grew up playing together you know that kind of right. thing you can't really get anywhere else like brothers but at the same time it was like I, I was trying to impose my songs um, on that mm -hmm. and it was like it just didn't really it was kind of it didn't really work it was like if we're going to yeah. do our thing it just needs to be like sort of an improvised thing equal yeah no, you this, know, anyway. your, this was your thing so i was like okay what do i want to do now like mm -hmm. i had i tried to have this band and it was like you know it, i was i was kind of trying to impose a glam thing on it but it didn't really work so it was like right. okay i wanted to i want to do glam but i want to i want to do something that you know celebrates fashion that tells communicates with fashion tells stories with like a character i want yeah. to incorporate you know, rock and roll music and blues and like guitar playing that comes from Led Zeppelin and what I grew up with. And, but I want to talk about like, I wanted to talk about what I'd kind of been through of like creating myself and like breaking out of a super limited environment mm -hmm. and, you know, celebrating individuality. And so it was kind of, that's what I, so that's what I was working on with all these songs. It was like, you know, trying to mold a persona mold and a, a project, a thing out of that.
so glad that now we are joined with the rest of the band and we can get to the music. You've got new music out. Tell us about that. So I've got a new full length vinyl record with Alive Records, um, which is kind of a compilation of pretty much the, I think the best things I've done plus new things as well. So it's kind of not quite 50-50 of new material and, and some older material, but uh, yeah, it's great. It's a, it's Do you awesome have a favorite track? Oh. Kiss Kiss. Kiss Kiss. Oh, yeah. <laughs> quick we answer. Love, we love Quick, yeah. Kiss Kiss, kiss, kiss yeah, that's, that's that, uh, Godhead's my favorite. Yeah, yeah, yeah Liam, Liam rips, rips that solo on Godhead's amazing. Yeah, it's... That solo's so good. And it's a little bit different fair compared to the rest of the record, I think, to yeah. Godhead, it really, yeah, it's, uh, it's epic. It is. It's big. It's, you know, it's complicated for a rock tune. You know yeah. what I mean? It's not run of the mill, I would say, by any stretch of the imagination. So, what would you say about audience response and participation from your music? Um, is there a certain song that you guys play live that you know is going to just erupt a room? It, it kind of changes, I feel like. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's like, oh, that song, tonight this song was the one, and then other nights it's like, oh, well, that song, you know? Yeah. It, so it kind of can be surprising in that way that it's not, you know, I mean, I guess the main goal is that we try to make every single song be that song. Uh, that's kind of my goal is that, you know, that every song is doing that. Um, and yeah, so it's hard for me to say which one is like the absolute standout. I guess that's when you have a hit is like when there's one that's just like people go absolutely. Or a couple, yeah. 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 So hopefully we've got a, a, all hits, right? That's, yes. But tongue tied, tongue tied, that one, you know, it has that quality where it's kind of like, you know, immediately everyone's like on board. Yeah. Um, I've noticed that because um, we, we have a residency now. We're playing every Saturday. This place called the Electric Jane in Nashville. Okay. The, those crowds, you know, sometimes people come to see us, but we, we don't necessarily promote it that much as like come to our show, you right. know? So it's more of like a built-in crowd, and it's and it's been amazing. It's been like sold-out reservations, but it's it's not people that have seen us before. Which so is we great. really get to like we have to win them over every time, mm -hmm. and so you know, which is a challenge. It's mm -hmm. a fun challenge. And so, yeah, that's, you know, I've noticed like tongue tie, we kind of started putting that earlier and earlier mm -hmm. in the set to like be like, okay, we know we're going to get you with this one. Yeah. And then, and Kiss Kiss is another one. Mm -hmm. You know, the songs that, you know, are just kind of these compact, like, you know, in your face. Going to grab you and keep you yeah. for the rest mm -hmm. of this show. Um, yeah. So, what's next for you? If you could continue to paint this palette and you can create anything you want, go anywhere with it. We want to go everywhere with it. We're going everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, uh, I just want to create and make better and better songs. You know, make more albums, make more art, and uh, and you know, I've got all these. You know, you have all these ideas of like, oh, well, if I had this, I you know, I want that. So it's like it's just a build. You know, it's just a build and play shows and and create create a, a world, you know, with the music. I mean, that's what I want to do with the, with the fashion and with the music and with the messages. I want to kind of create this world that's like super immersive, that people, you know, can come and have this experience that is just like, you know, takes you out of whatever, everything, anything you're dealing with and like in whatever venue we're in, it, it kind of transports into this like, you know, however long the show is, an hour and a half or two hours of just like something that is like a release. It's like, it's, it's in the, it's now brings you in the present moment and it's like, you know, like a, a, an experience. I want to create an experience. This one's called Kiss Kiss. <laughs> 